Okay, I wanted to uh, give you all a couple of tips, those of you who are taking academic writing this semester. And uh, as we complete our first draft, there's a couple of things that, uh, that are coming up. Uh, so please uh, consider this. Take a look at your own, uh, your own work, your own text, and uh, try to make the, the following changes. The first thing that I would uh, like for you to check is to make sure that the document that you're using is in inches, not centimeters. Now, there, there are a few things here. For example, the indentations primarily uh, need to be a half inch indentation for each body paragraph. So the best, I think the easiest way to do that is to open up your document in Microsoft Word because uh, there are some limitations in how you edit the document online. So if you open this up, in fact, one of those limitations is this toolbar that appears here. This is not available in Word Online, uh, so you're, you're not going to be able to really know for sure how much the indentation is until you open the document in Microsoft Word. So go ahead and open that up. If for some reason the ruler does not appear, make sure that you go under View and click Rulers, otherwise uh, it won't appear. So once you've done that, then you need to go to your settings. Now this is going to depend on whether or not you have a PC or a Mac. I'm going to show you how to do this in a PC, uh, I'm sorry, in a Mac. But uh, if you have a PC, it might be a slightly different way to navigate to this. But someplace in options, uh, you should be able to uh, make these changes. So what you need to do here is go to, so I'm going to go to preferences, general. And I'm just going to make sure that I have inches selected, otherwise it's going to be centimeters. And again, this is because since you need to set this at a half an inch, it's much easier to set it at a half an inch than, uh, than to set the same distance in centimeters. So select it to inches. And what I would do, the easiest way to do this is to select your entire text. Okay, I'm not going to do it here, but let's suppose that you have selected the entire text. And... Well, the first thing I would do is make sure that your first line of each paragraph is all the way to the left. So, for example, if I move this all the way to the left, then select the entire text. Let's assume I've selected the entire text. I can move this slider over a half an inch. And notice that all the paragraphs will slide over. Now notice here in the second paragraph, because I didn't remove those spaces, it uh, moves it too far over. So what I need to do, there's a couple of things. I could go all the way to the prior paragraph and then hit return, and it automatically sets exactly the way it should be. Or, as I, as I did earlier, I can move or eliminate those spaces first and then select the text and, and move this over. But using the slider bar is the preferred way, so that way it's set automatically. And if you do this at the very beginning, as you type your text, it will respect this half inch indentation throughout throughout your your writing. So make sure that you have a half inch indentation for each of your five paragraphs. Now looking at uh, the spacing, make sure that you have double space. So if you go to the home tab here at the top and you click here, make sure this is selected, but you need to go one step further and click line spacing options. And notice here how this is set at 8. This needs to be set at 0. The spacing before the paragraphs also needs to be set at 0. Make sure that, again, this shows double. What happens is if you select the entire text and you go to this menu, and for, for whatever reason, if the spacing is different between the text that you select, this will not appear. There won't be anything that will appear here. It'll be just a blank. So what I would do is click on here and just make sure that this is set as double and then that will make sure that all the text that was selected, again make sure that you select the text, it'll make sure that uh, all of that text is uh, double spaced. And then the last thing to check is make sure that you have this box selected. Don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. So again you want to check the spacing before and after you want to check the line spacing and you want to check this off so that there's no additional space between paragraphs. If you do this, then you will be assured that this space here will be equal to the space between each lines within the paragraph. 
So that's what we need to do. Again, the easiest way to do it is select the entire text and go through those steps that I just mentioned. So double check your line spacing, double check your indentation, making sure that you first change the unit of measures over to inches, probably from centimeters. I would think probably most of you are, the default is in centimeters, so you want to make sure that those are, the units are in inches. All right, now the last thing I want to mention, actually there's a couple of things more. So let me, let me go back to the document and go down to references. Now, uh, make sure that you're adhering to APA, so make sure that you have the proper text italicized, make sure the indentations are correct. Notice it's the, the exact inverse as your paragraphs. The indentations are the opposite as they are in the paragraphs. In the paragraphs, you, you begin with the first line as a half inch indentation. The rest of the lines are not. And with the references, the first line is not or does not include an indentation, the rest of the lines do. So again, the easiest way to do that is to select all of your text and, and play around here with the sliders. Now notice here, this bottom slider is not quite over to a half an inch. And my guess is because, uh, because this individual probably uh, had the unit of measures in centimeters. Uh, the top is fine, the top slider is fine, but the bottom margin or the left indent should be all the way over just a little bit more over to half an inch. Now make sure that you have single spaced uh, your references within each reference, but you double space between each reference. So again, uh, the easiest way to do this is to select all of the text, all of it completely and under references, go to single space, again making sure all the line items are zero spacing before and after, make sure, now notice here that you had multiple, I, I think I misspoke earlier. So the line spacing, whenever you select text and you do have different line spacing, it will appear like this, multiple. So we don't want that, we want to actually have either double or single, right? In this case, under references, we want to select single. We want to make sure that we add, don't add space between paragraphs, just as we've done above and click OK. So once you've done that, then you need to go back and click a hard return after each of the references. So you want a double space between each reference, you want single space within each reference. So double check your spacing, double check your indentations for your references, make sure you check it APA overall, but make sure that you have your the correct text italicized. Remember it's different depending on whether or not it's a, an article or a book or a website. Now the last thing I'd like to mention with regard to references. The link, make sure that the link you are using what's called a permalink. So uh, for example if I click on this link this should take me to the article. Now notice that I have to sign in here um, because the link here that's in the document is not a permalink. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you an example of how to access a permalink within the article. And I'm going to use the EBSCOhost as an example. I think this is one of the easiest ways to find the permalink. It's going to, it's going to depend also on the database. So every database is slightly different. But the idea is that you want to find a permalink that will take the reader directly to your article. So we'll go into EBSCOhost and go into the database. So let's look up some articles. We'll put in some key words here. And this is just as an example. Always make sure that you select uh, the complete text and academic articles or peer review articles. Okay, and we'll select an article here as an example. Now the tendency is to use this URL here at the top and uh, this is the problem here. So if I, if I were to do this then the person, the reader, to access this would be prompted to sign in as, as it appeared here just a, a second ago. So what we need here is the permalink. Well in Spanish it's called enlace permanente but in English it's usually referred to as permalink. This is the link that we need. So this link will take the reader directly to the database. Okay, so if you select the permalink then this will uh, 
take the reader directly to the uh, to the article. So make sure in your references that you include the permalink. Also make sure you include the link to any reference, regardless of the type, any reference that you find online. That could be a, a peer-reviewed academic article that you found online that maybe wasn't through the database. Obviously, if you found one through the database, we need to include that link. If you find a book online, whether it's a Google Books or through eBrary, we need that link. Obviously, websites, you'll include the link. So regardless of the type, please include the permalink. But uh, consider this whenever you're creating your references. Make sure you have at least three references, primary research articles. And the references title, level one heading, should be center to the page and in bold. Finally, make sure that you include a title to your essay. Again, this will be a level one heading, centered to the page, in bold, and I would include six to 12 words in your title. If you have any questions, uh, make sure you uh, send me an email, come by and talk to me in my office, or obviously ask questions in class uh, as we finish this week and complete our first draft for a concept paper.